Greetings, everybody. I am Lobo, and welcome to episode 63 of my Minecraft survival series. And as you can see right here, we've got items going through our bulk storage system. We've got a bunch of stone and dirt and stuff like that. Basically stuff I dug out uh, just a few minutes ago. And it's running through the bulk sorting system. And as you can see, gameplay is actually pretty smooth. And I am digging that. That means what we were doing last episode helped a lot. And uh, I've even run our multi-item sorter between episodes. Uh, that, it's a little choppy. I'm going to be honest with you, it's a little choppy. But what it's like now is comparable to what it was like before when the entire system was off. Which means the game is actually very playable, Al. <laughs> you know, so what we did last episode was very beneficial to me. Uh, now, in this episode, we are still working underground, but we are not working with our storage system. We are actually going to be making an extension of Wolfen's Laboratory. So you might remember this corridor right here, which leads down into our gas room. Uh, we are going to make an extension off of this, another corridor that comes down this way and maybe takes a sharp right right here, goes down these stairs. Hi, turtle. Hi. Um, what are you looking at? Do you need to get up there? I'll help you out with that. Uh, later. But first, let's go ahead and continue on down this way. And I'm not sure that this is the exact route the corridor is going to take, but we are eventually going to end up in this area, our slime farm, where we're working today. Uh, also down here is our zombie spawner. I'm not sure if we're going to use that, but we are definitely going to be making some progress on this thing. So the first thing we need to do, or actually the first thing we need to do on camera, since I've done a little bit of preparation prior to the start of this episode, is come over here to jumping jack-o'-lanterns, because we need some jack-o'-lanterns. Now, you might know that slimes spawn regardless of light level, so we're going to have plenty of lighting down there to prevent other mobs from spawning in our mob farm, or our slime farm, uh, because we only want slime. I don't want to have to sort anything out, I just want slime. So the reason we're going to be using jack-o'-lanterns for that is because it's considered a solid block. Block, which means slimes can spawn on top of it and enable us to maximize our spawning space and get some big slime spawning which means more slime balls for us overall now I do have some face pumpkins out here which I don't like hanging out in our field we put those down before the update uh, they'll have to come out eventually I'm not going to take those with us it's not enough to do our project today regardless uh, and I did have to make some new shears for this as well or not new shears I didn't have to make them but I did have to repair some shears which required two iron and five levels and I'm thinking it might be more beneficial to us overall considering the amount of leaves and stuff that we get to go ahead and just throw mending on shears it seems weird it's a weird idea at least to me because I never put mending on shears before but it might be something that needs to happen Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and lay some pumpkins out here. I'm gonna carve some faces on them, throw some torches in them, and that will be our light source for our slime farm. And I think we should be uh, just about ready to get started, unless there's something I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, concrete, because we are completely changing up the aesthetic of the slime farm. It's no longer gonna be all wooden like it was when we first came up with the idea to put a slime farm down there way, way back. Uh, now we're gonna be using a bunch of this stuff and some terracotta because it's a offshoot of Wolfen's laboratory. The view up here, it's kind of daunting when I look that way because there's so much work to be done, but looking this way, yeah, the view. I like that. So let's head on down to our slime farm, and at this point, I gotta say, there's a high likelihood that I did not get enough materials to complete this, but we're gonna be experimenting around doing a small section first. There's a cave around here somewhere. I thought we got all the caves lit up. But there may be some I haven't broken into yet. I don't know. We'll have to go look for that. I'll do that later. I'll do that later. Uh, but yeah, the first thing we need... Zombie? Shush. Uh, the first thing we need to do regarding this slime farm is actually get rid of it. Just like we're getting rid of this creeper right here. Perfect. So yeah, the first thing we need to do is actually get rid of it uh, because we built this a long time ago. We started this a long time ago and we maybe got it, I don't know, 20% done at most. Um, and yeah, this is just not going to work for me because when we first built this thing, we built this in the kind of aesthetic of what we thought our mine was going to look like. Uh, but now we're going to have all our mob farms be an extension of Wolfen's laboratory, uh, which means it needs to be a little bit more cohesive with the rest of the Wolfen stuff. So I think the best thing for us to do is go ahead and start from scratch. 
So I guess now would be a good time for me to let you know why I want to start over completely using this creeper right here as an example. Now, as you can see, he is bobbing up and down in the water and not taking as much damage on the magma blocks as he should be. And I feel the slimes kind of do the same thing because these big slimes right here, uh, they're going to be a little bit in the water regardless of where they fall down, right? So... I'm thinking this maybe keeps them alive a little bit longer than it probably should. And if we can get rid of the magma block, or not the magma blocks, we want to keep those, all of those. But if we can get rid of the water completely, I think that's going to be very beneficial to us. <laughs> Slowness and poison? Come on, lady. I'm trying to get some work done here. You and all your friends need to leave me alone. Are you, are you serious? Stop it! Given the amount of hostile mobs spawning, I think it's a pretty good sign that we've been pretty successful in lighting up the majority of caves around this area. Uh, but that does mean since we took our light sources out of here while I'm tearing it down, uh, that this place is pretty dangerous. So I'm still not quite done with the demolition, but since we got this guy on us now, I want to conduct a little experiment. Uh, because when the uh, slime blocks end up on the magma cubes, they jump. And when they're jumping, they're not taking damage because they're not in contact with the magma blocks. So what if we kind of limit their ability to jump? We make their jump smaller so they touch the magma blocks more often. Does that uh, kill them faster is what I'm wondering. I am not ready for you yet. Could you stop attacking me for just a second in the interest of science? So I was thinking about lowering our overhang a little bit, but as you see here, this guy cannot fit under a two block gap. He can, however, fit under a two and a half block gap. Uh, so what I've done here is I have lined the bottom of our overhang with half slabs. So if we can lure this guy over here, we can do a bit of experimentation. So when he's outside of that, you see he gets air time, which is time he's not being damaged. But if we get him under this, he cannot hop as high and therefore takes damage much, much quicker and splits apart much, much quicker. So I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to outline the entire perimeter of our slime farm with an overhang so that way when these guys wander around and believe me they wander around a lot they'll be much more likely to get taken out quicker uh now um slimes do take fall damage so let me pop over here any slimes that fall from up high uh they're going to take a lot of damage when they fall down immediately and we don't have to worry about them but slimes that come from say this level right here uh, they're not going to be pre-damaged by the time they hit the magma block, so we need to take them out as quickly as possible. And since we're using enough time letting them wander off the edge of their own accord, like we're not using iron golems to lure them or anything, this right here should be very beneficial to us in converting the slimes into slime balls uh, as quickly as possible. So we're going to have four rows of magma blocks then with rails run running underneath the entirety of this. Uh, the water will be taken out. We will not be using any water in this anymore. And also, out. Oh, no, ow. That didn't even hurt me. Cool. Uh, also, we're going to have this two blocks off the ground. So that way, when the slimes jump off of here, they will not be able to jump anywhere else, uh, which means they're going to be stuck on the magma blocks until their bottom planes are all nice and warm and toasty. Uh, so let me go ahead and get rid of these now. And I'm going to go ahead and run the rails and then we will put this all back in place. I just want to say the process of trying to put down rails around these guys is ridiculous because they're just hopping around here and you can't place any blocks down on the ground. And the bad part about this, getting rid of them, is the fact that once I do, within a few seconds, a big one's going to spawn and this whole process is going to start over yet again. Why? What? This, again, is just ridiculous. I mean, on the bright side, I think we've got the right slime chunks. Like, if you're ever curious as to whether or not you're in a slime chunk, try running rails in it. Because they'll come running. So as you guys know, I like to run tests before I get, like, systems built in. For instance, our slime ball collection system is just a hopper minecart running on rails underneath uh, these magma blocks right here. And I really just wanted to make sure that it was going to be picking up magma or um, the slime balls from each of the magma block sections. The problem is we can't really run this test because our hopper minecart keeps running into slime and they keep bouncing it the opposite direction. 
So yeah, we're just gonna have to assume this is gonna work. It should work. There's, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, but it's just incredibly frustrating not being able to test this thing out. Uh, so we'll be able to do a full test until we actually get the entire magma block floor in place. So no more slimes get down here in this area. It is good though that we tried to run a test because you know we do that to see if anything's going to go wrong and I have found a problem uh, and that is basically this. Uh, the hopper minecart just gets stuck on that redstone block. It does not proceed on its merry way. Uh, so I don't know if it has something to do with like a redstone block being there. Like it, it does it like is that a transparent block or something? I don't know. Uh, but what we can do instead is put our little redstone block down here at the bottom and then we can put a different type of full block right here. Say we'll just do two stone slabs on top of each other and that should work. That should bounce it off and make it go the opposite way around. And I just want to make I just wanted to make sure that this takes less than five minutes to go around the entire system, hit the block and then come back. And it does. It takes it takes less than five minutes. So we don't have to worry about items despawning on the track or anything at any point. And now we have a slime in our minecart because I didn't put the hopper back in. <laughs> this is just rid ridiculous. All right, where are you? Where are you? Ugh! Take that. <laughs> this guy has just been joyriding my minecart and taunting me. Oh man, okay. And the thing is, we need to get that minecart back and put a hopper in it and get it in place before we put our magma blocks over the top of it, uh, be did it really just pick up a- STOP! You- <laughs> This is incredibly frustrating. We can't seal the minecart down here. We need to get it back before we put the magma blocks in place. But these guys are just messing with me at this point. It's ridiculous. Oh, man. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and try to, uh... <laughs> it's never gonna end, is it? I'm just gonna be stuck out here forever. Oh, okay. This is the rest of the video, guys. This is the rest of the next three videos. <laughs> oh, finally. All right, back to work. So if you notice, we have half slabs along the sides. Uh, to prevent mobs spawning along the sides and this space like they're not going to spawn on the tracks underneath the magma blocks Leave me alone. Just stop uh, So once we get these in place, we don't have to worry about anything else being down here on the tracks commandeering our minecart The problem is going to be trying to get these these magma blocks in without slimes jumping in front of me and Trying to impede my ability to place blocks Which we're about to have a lot of as I work my way down this area Do you, do you guys want to see your future because it looks a little something like this? So finally that should just about do it for our magma floor um, <laughs> And that was rough but um, now we can go ahead and get started on uh, kind of building this thing up. Uh, so you see the platforms right here. We have them wrapped in caution tape approaching the edge. So you know that once you pass that caution tape, you're in for a rough time. I think we're also going to go ahead and do caution tape over this as well. And maybe also the chunk borders just so I can know where they are and see them and everything like that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get that stuff in place. Then we'll kind of talk about things a little bit more as we proceed. Now at this point, we're using a little bit more caution tape than I originally intended, which means we don't have enough black concrete to go around. So before we get to building the, the bulk of the platforms, I'm gonna have to get some more of that. Uh, but let's go ahead and focus on the floor right here. I think what we're gonna do is have this room be kind of half slabbed, uh, just to prevent mob spawning down here, because while I don't believe this is a slime chunk, at this point, I'm not taking any chances, because you see, we do have slime spawning outside of our farm, uh, because we got a lot of slime chunks around here. There's a lot. Um, so I think just to be safe, we're going to go ahead and do half slab floors, uh, for all the areas that we personally will be wandering around in and we don't want mobs coming out and bugging us while we're trying to do stuff. Now, as far as the rest of the layout of this, like how we're going to get down here, um, I don't know. I don't know. We're not actually working on our areas today. We're working on the slime areas, you know, just the spawning platforms and all that stuff. And we'll just see how far our materials can, uh, can carry us. 
So moving over here to our spawning platforms, we need to think about how we're going to be placing our lighting, our jack-o'-lanterns, which are our spawnable block that will keep other mobs from spawning down here and just ensure we have slime. Uh, so I think the spacing is going to be about three blocks apart from each other, both horizontally and vertically, uh, two blocks from the end. And I think that should give us enough coverage to make sure no other mobs spawn down here. It's probably overkill. Uh, and this is probably not the most efficient way to do this, but it is going to be the most uniform and give us the best results without having to worry about dark spots, you know? And I think as far as the rest of our floor is concerned, we're just going to do a series of concentric squares utilizing stone slabs and stone brick slabs in an alternating pattern uh, just to make sure our floor is not super boring to look at. And in case you are worried about efficiency and you're building your own slime farm, half slabs are actually the way to go for the floor because that kind of gives the slimes a little bit of extra headroom to jump around, cover more space with these jump. We have full blocks along the edges, which are going to slightly uh, impair the slime's ability to jump when they get towards the end. Like they might have to jump an extra time to get over the edge. To be honest, I'm not super worried about that because we had full blocks on the edges of our previous slime farm. Uh, which was only two levels high and that kept us very very well supplied uh, Oversupplied in fact and what we're doing now building it up so many levels It's just going to be a ludicrous amount of slime balls that we actually get from this thing uh, But yeah, I just wanted to kind of clarify that real quick so how I was saying that two uh, Levels was enough to keep us satisfied before it looks like we're actually going to be going up nine uh, so that's a lot of individual spawning platforms, like nine times three chunks. That's like 27 uh, individual spawning platforms. And we do have slime spawning outside the farm. Like there's a slime chunk over here somewhere. There's one over here somewhere. We're going to have to stop them from spawning outside the farm to make sure that the farm is running as efficiently as it could with the restrictions that we put upon it. Uh, you know, it's a balancing act. The, ow, the balance between aesthetics and functionality. But I mean, this is going to function well enough for us because again, I am a single player in this world. I can only place down so many slime blocks if I try. Uh, but yeah, we do know what each of the spawning platforms is going to look like now. So let's go ahead and put on some music and get the rest of these built up. Welcome back everybody. We have our spawning platforms in now. The farm though is not as efficient as it could be uh, because there's no outside walls keeping the slimes inside. They uh, just fall on the on the caution tape instead of straight down to the magma cubes, which they will once the walls are built up. But I had to do a pretty significant amount of resupply just to get the spawning platforms built. Um, which means I don't have enough terracotta to go around to do the outside walls quite yet. I may have to do some resource gathering in between episodes to get prepared for that for the next time we come back here. But before we actually leave the slime farm, there is something I need to do. 
uh, for a future part of this farm, or for a future part of the aesthetic portion of Wolfen's laboratory here, is I need to capture this big guy. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is take off my Thorn's armor because we do not want that guy splitting. I want a full big slime. Uh, let me go ahead and take off all of my Thorn's stuff. And uh, we'll try to capture this guy in a mic. Ow. Ow. No. No, that happened quick. Uh, he's going to kill me. <laughs> I need to get out of here. Oh, man. How bad would that be? We just uh, fought five withers and we get killed by a slime. Uh, okay. Um, guy, you're just going to have to try not to hit me because you will get hurt if you do. Back up. Don't. This may be a little bit more difficult than I originally thought. Well, maybe not, because we had another big slime join us down here, so if we put this down with the quickness and get it going, he took a little bit of damage, but then he is in the minecart, perfect, and uh, that rails off. You can uh, you can stop moving now. Um, I guess he's not going to stop unless he wants to, because mobs can control minecarts, right? Uh, but yeah, we do have him trapped now, and we do need to name tag him to make sure he does not despawn. Now, the issue with that is, you saw when he shoulder checked me, he got hurt. <laughs> and we do not want him trying to shoulder check me again and get split up into a million pieces. So I'm going to ask these little guys to nicely back away so they do not bump us into each other. Uh, so please, and you as well, consideration please, thank you. And I think it's just, oh, two more, go away, and yeah, that's it. Okay, so come over here, away from him. Perfect. All right, now we just need to name tag this guy. His name is Splat, and the uh, the scientists over at Wolfen's Laboratory have something special planned for him. Uh, something kind of fun in the slime block processing station, uh, which we'll get to in a future episode. But yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it for what we're going to be doing today here. Uh, the farm is not running at this point, let me just say that. Uh, because we have plenty of slime balls uh, to hold us over for quite a while. And also, Splat's kind of occupying the minecart at this point. And to be honest, I'm pretty content to let him do so until we get back. Oh, and Splat, because I feel a little bad about that altercation we had earlier, here is a tasty, refreshing beverage. I hope everything's good between us now. Hi, Splat's friend. How are- Ow! Now, before we get too far out of the area, there is some Wolfen's Laboratory business we need to take care of because something was brought to my attention. So you guys may remember Steve, who works over here in our Drown Laboratory. He's a researcher over here in our Drown Laboratory. Uh, and he's always conversing with this drowned on the end here, and I finally learned why one of our viewers brought it to my attention. It's because they are actually father and son. And I should have realized because Steve on his application, his his name, his full name is actually Steve Jr. And this drowned over here, his name is actually Steve. Excuse me, I'm trying to work you into a storyline here. <laughs> okay, his name is actually Steve Sr. So Steve Sr. and Steve Jr., I should have made the connection earlier, but I didn't, and <laughs> it goes right back to talking to him. Oh, Steve, you you crack me up sometimes. Uh, and to the viewer that suggested that piece of lore, I do deeply appreciate it. I think that's awesome. I'm never sure if it's okay to like say names and stuff like that, because I know some people might like that, some might not. Uh, so yeah, I just want I just want to let you know I do I do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, and of course, because we have such inclement weather here, as soon as I surface, there is a skeleton horse waiting for me. So we have our horsemen here, but at this point, we've dealt with enough of them to know exactly how to handle this situation. We'll just take our time, aim over their heads just slightly enough to only hit the skeleton and leave the horse unharmed. And there's one horse free. This should be the second. Yep, here is number three. And this should be number four. Perfect. At this point, it is painfully apparent that the stables we have constructed over here in our farming district is not sufficient for the amount of horses that we actually have. Uh, we are well over capacity here, uh, even with an open stall. Yeah, we are well over capacity and we need to make sure our animals are living in comfort. And so we're gonna have to come over here into our farming district, which we've been kind of neglecting lately and do some work over here, give our animals some room so they're not living in such cramped quarters, not even just the horses, but all of our animals. Let me go up here and talk to Wesley real quick. Wesley is our stable boy. And uh, just so you know, we brought some more strays in, so you got a little bit extra work ahead of you uh, for the time being. I'll try to get you an assistant out here. But yeah, that's uh, it seems like the, the more work we do, and we've accomplished a lot. 
uh, in this world. But it seems like the the further we get, the more stuff there is to do. Oh man. Uh, guys, these, uh, <laughs> these slime are getting a little out of control. Um, I did not know. I was not aware that slime could climb ladders, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, apparently they can. And, uh, we have to take care of these guys. They are becoming a huge nuisance. Um, so we will get the farm completed soon. We will get the contain soon. So that way they're not trying to, to break out and do all kinds of crazy stuff in our city. Oh man, this episode has taken a couple weird turns at the end here. Uh, but I think we're gonna go ahead and call it for today. Let me um, let me go over here so I can get a better view of the slime farm, and then we'll go ahead and do our little outro, and uh, then I'll start getting prepared for whatever we're gonna be doing next episode. So Splat, Splat and I will be back with you shortly. Ow. But, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much going to be it for us today. Uh, we did make a pretty good amount of progress. I am happy with the amount of progress we made. So, if you guys have enjoyed this episode, please feel free to hit that little thumbs up button. That would mean a whole lot to me. And if you want to see more, please remember to subscribe. And as always, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, I am Lobo, and I will see you guys later. Later.